we're going to bring up your, your next speaker. That's going to be the wonderful, magnificent Chris James. If you talk about how much you hate your fat, your body has been working all this time to keep you alive. I don't think anybody in my circle understands me. Yeah, what's up, everybody? What's going on? I know you didn't expect to see me at, well, it's nearly 3, uh, 3, 3 p.m. Central Time. But I was inspired to do a live. Well, I was I was doing a video for our challenge group, our R72 challenge, the weight loss challenge. And uh, I was talking about YouTube and it just kind of it just kind of inspired me to do a live uh, today. So I wanted to, first of all. Let you all know. I'll be ta I'll be taking some questions on the live today. So, of course, as always, if you're interested in, in dropping questions in there, I'll do my best to. You know what I mean? Kind of go back through and and uh, get any questions. But so what happened was, um, somebody had asked me. There was there was like oh I can't you know I can't join the challenge because I don't really have the the uh, resources the monetary resources to do it, and there was like can can I follow along on YouTube? I was like dang like uh, we don't re we're not really gonna be doing anything on YouTube as it relates to the challenge. You know, that's going to be specially for the group. I was like, but maybe what we could do, I'll ask the group and see if they would like to come on the show and 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 share what they've experienced um, during the challenge thus far. Right. And so as the weeks progress, you guys who aren't aren't in the challenge, you can get an opportunity to just kind of, you know, see what's going on, what people are what people are experiencing. Now, I could tell you I could tell you right now that we are in the prep week and we have had I've seen multiple people reporting anywhere from three to nine pounds weight loss already. And we are we are five days into the prep week. So. We're making we're, we're moving, we're moving and grooving. Um, but so what I decided to do today, I figured, OK, well, you know, maybe I can maybe I could do a video and we'll talk about weight loss. We'll talk about a goal that many people have. So so I'm thinking, like, what is that number that people always say? What's that number? Well, 100 pounds is one of the numbers. People always say they got 100 pounds to lose. So that's a very common number. But another common number is 40 pounds. And I'm like, OK, 40 pounds, we could we could talk about. We could do this pretty reasonably. Right. It's not going to take something super strenuous because uh, when you when you when you talk about weight loss especially fasting for weight loss depending on how you approach it you can lose a tremendous amount of weight like within you know three or four weeks depending on how much weight you have to lose it slows down a little bit when you start getting up into the you know 70 pounds 100 pound range that you've lost it slows down a little bit but if you've only got 40 pounds to lose, you can lose it very quickly. I mean, I would say five, five weeks is not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable to lose 40 pounds in five weeks. So we're going to run through one or two different scenarios and, uh, you know, see if we can help somebody out there lose 40 pounds whether you're with us in the challenge or not, those that are in the challenge, our goal is to lose uh, about 25 pounds on average. Um, and we're doing a little bit lighter. We're doing a little bit lighter uh, fast. And the, the reason for that is because we want to make sure that, that um, this, this fasting process is sustainable for people. So. First of all, most people. Most people have anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds locked up in their intestinal tract. Also, what a lot of people don't know is a lot of your weight is what is considered water weight. Okay. 
So if if you've got, and everybody's going to be different, but if you've got 10 to 20 pounds locked up in your intestinal tract and you've got another 10 or 20 pounds of water weight, it won't take very long because you're just talking about flushing and you're talking about reducing inflammation. So it's not going to take us very long to get this done. And the more concise you are with the with the uh, the process, the quicker you could get it done. So uh, Sandra said, hit the like button. Listen, hit the like button, people. Here we go. There we go. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Uh, New York in the building. Yo, ha- like, are you not in Buffalo, are you? I, Buffalo is suffering right now, aren't they? Um. Oh, what? What is this? I, hold on. What is this? So, is it all about money for you? Do you want to expound on that? <laughs> is what all about money for me? When we talk about weight loss. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, as a general, as a general, uh, overarching theme for how I move, I don't do anything for money. Meaning, money is not my motivator right? Money's not my God. Um, I'm assuming that you're probably new to my channel or my content. Maybe you don't know me at all. Uh, But I did everything for free for the first mm, maybe two, two two-ish, three years, something like that. I gave away all my content for free. I did consultation for free. I did everything for free while working a full-time job. So no, not only is it not all about money for me, um, money is just something that we need because we live in a, a society where if you want to have a house, maybe a car, maybe go to a grocery store and buy food, you need it. So, uh, yeah, definitely not. But, um, yeah, New York is crazy right now. Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. Okay. Queen says she need to lose. Wait. Oh, wait. No. Uh, what's she say? After 30 days. I will be going to R. Oh, R forty R forty eight. So you're gonna do a rolling, like a two day rolling fast. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you guys could do these fasts, these cycles. Um, I'm not, I'm not as big of a fan of a R forty eight as I am of a R seventy two, just because of the benefit that you get, the immense benefit you get from a R seventy two. But um, R forty eight is just two days of fasting. Okay. Then typically when you guys do these rolling cycles, you know, there's many different ways to do it. I like to talk about what's optimal. So if you're going to do a rolling cycle, I recommend doing one day of eating. I, I, I would recommend one day of eating. So you do your 48 hours of fasting or your 72 hours of fasting, and then you do one day of eating. However, we did develop a protocol called the 5-2. Okay, so the 5-2 is five days of eating, two, uh, I'm sorry, five days of fasting, two days of eating. Not to be confused with five days of eating, two days of fasting, because that's something else. All right, that's that's not AHA approved. But the original, the original um, protocol we developed was the, uh, the five, two. And actually, since we're talking about, you know, losing 40 pounds very quickly, the five, two is an amazing protocol to use for this very purpose. So the thing that you guys want to understand is um, use your use the tools you have at your disposal to your advantage. You can use. okay, there are natural laxatives that you can use to aid you in eliminating that that toxicity that's in your intestinal tract. So with a lot of the intestinal, um, the the, uh, fecal matter and stuff being trapped in your intestinal tract. I like to focus on getting rid of as much as that as possible before we kind of get into fasting. Okay. And you can make this a part of your overall process for losing the weight. But uh, obviously, number one, you want to hydrate. Okay. So before you really start using any laxative or anything like that, you want to hydrate. Now, when I say laxative, I'm going to be referring to herbs. You could use herbs. um, You could use uh, uh, Epsom salt. You could use castor oil. You know, um, you could also do something like a colonic or an enema, okay, a water enema. And these are going to be good ways to release the the fecal matter from your intestinal tract. 
But you want to want to drink a lot of water. You want to hydrate well because that's the key to lubricating your system and making sure that you're eliminating efficiently. You know, if you're going to be going, if you're going to be going out of your way to do any of these things, you want to make sure that you're being efficient. You don't want to waste time and effort. So start. The first thing you want to do is start drinking your water. Now you can you can um, I I always recommend a gallon of water, distilled water. And then you can you can re-energize your water with like key limes. So get yourself a, a glass jar and you put your gallon of water in the glass jar, cut your key limes up, let it cold steep for about four hours. That just means that you're not going to heat the water. You just put the fruit in there and you let it steep in there for about four hours. And you start drinking that and you're going to drink that every day. All right. Um, you want to you want to eliminate your breakfast meal, maybe do like uh you know, fruit smoothie if you want to, or a green juice would be great. Or you could do nothing, you know. So this is kind of how you're going to start it. And then you're going to choose a method. You're going to find a detox tea that you like. You're going to find a, uh, or you could do, like I said, Epsom salt, or you could do like castor oil, or um, um, you could do one of the flushes. And you're going to do that process. Now, I'm going to warn you, if you do Epsom, Epsom salt, you that's not something you want to be doing every day. So I would I would not do an Epsom salt flush more than maybe uh, twice, twice a week, three, three times a week is kind of pushing it. It really depends on your level of hydration. I don't really like the Epsom salt flush as much. It's really effect effective, but it dries you out. You got to be careful. You don't want to overuse that. So that's going to help you get rid of an immense amount of weight. Um. You might drop five pounds just from doing the flushing. You know, you're gonna you're gonna increase water. You're gonna skip breakfast. You're gonna do the flushing. You might drive. You might drop five pounds just that quick. All right. So uh, that's that's the first tip. The second tip is we're going to we're going to look at some form of fasting regimen. I'm gonna look at the five two since we kind of started talking about it. OK, the five two is going to expedite this process a little bit for you. But if you're going to do the five two before you before you go into the five two, what I want you all to do is um, do what's called a juice feast first. OK, so <clears throat> first you're going to first you're going to hydrate and you're going to do that throughout this whole process. You're going to stay hydrated. You're going to do your laxative, do your flush. OK, then after that. You're going to do uh, a, a roughly about a gallon of juice two days in a row. OK, you want to do two days of a gallon of juice. Um, if you want to if you want to keep it. Green green juice uh, is good for um, allowing the body to eliminate sugar. So I like green juice. But as far as like furthering the process of cleansing the intestinal tract. Uh, a sub acidic acidic or sub acidic fruit juice is going to be best. I would just recommend like orange juice or grapefruit juice. They, they give you a tremendous yield. They're very inexpensive. You get a tremendous yield from them and they get the job done. The acid from the fruit, right? You guys have already started the process of lubricating the system and flushing the system. The acid from the fruit is going to start penetrating like it's acid. It's going to start penetrating that plaque lining that's in your intestinal tract and it will start breaking it down and moving it out of your system. Okay. And this is going to help tremendously um, in the way of just mitigating detox symptoms and bolstering your weight loss. If you guys, if you guys do all of this stuff before you start the fasting process, it's going to make the fasting e easier and it's going to make it more efficient. If you skip this part, you could still lose the weight. Many people have. Right. But it's going to make it harder. And I don't know why you would want that. Also, by doing this before you start doing the fasting, it does help build a little discipline. One of the greatest problems we see is not losing the weight. Most people do lose the weight. I, we have uh, we have an infinite amount of testimonials. The problem is people tend to gain the weight back. Now, this this protocol is not designed to help mitigate that. You know, um, this is actually something we we teach more in our programs. Every program we teach, we try to impart wisdom that's going to help, you know, help you guys um, 
maintain better. Obviously, I've got I've got videos on YouTube as well talking about how to maintain better. But this is really more about losing the weight. But by doing the, the preparation and stuff beforehand, you're going to learn. Like if you pay attention to what you're doing and you pay attention to how your body responds, you're going to learn. And it's going to encourage you to want to adopt some new lifestyle changes. Lifestyle, lifestyle change is the only way you can keep the weight off. All right. Like fasting is not a magic bullet. It's not going to get rid of the weight. And then the weight can never come back again. Right. It's not going to help you reverse diabetes. And then diabetes is dead and it can never come back again. Everything can always come back because it's based on lifestyle. So you're going to have to address your lifestyle eventually. It might as well start, you know, now. But what's going to be important for you guys to do is be intentional about paying attention to your body during this time. I want to also put another warning out there. This is not this is not a full um, kind of like a full spectrum protocol. This isn't a full spectrum training. OK, that's not what this is. This is like a quick boom, boom, bam. Thank you, ma'am. 40 pounds. I look good. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. So what I what I want you all to do is understand that this protocol is going to um, make your body sensitive. So it's it's important to understand that when you when you start pulling that uh, plaque lining out of your intestinal tract, the reason that lining is there in the first place is because it protects your body from toxicity, okay? When you when you strip that lining away, now your body becomes more reactive to toxicity. So you think, "Oh, that's a bad thing, Chris." Well, yes, if you if you don't if you don't make any lifestyle changes, um, you know, your body becomes sensitive to it and you know, you can see the weight come back on pretty quickly. But here's the good thing that it does. And this is why you want to do this. That that plaque lining that's in your intestinal tract, that's kind of like your tolerance. It allows you to eat toxicity without having without dying. It also blocks absorption. It blocks your ability to absorb. So when you eat, you know how like you be eating, you're eating, you think you're eating the right things. You're doing everything right. Why isn't it working, Chris? I'm eating everything I'm supposed to be eating. It's not working. Well. You have an absorption issue. And this plaque lining that's protecting us also blocks absorption. Nothing in, nothing out. So it's got to be done. But you need to just be warned about it. You need to know that your body's going to be sensitive. Okay? We're going we're gonna to hit it quick and we're going to hit it hard. The body's going to be sensitive. So I want you guys to just um, take it easy after you finish this protocol. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could adopt like raw food eating or you could just adopt – like an alkaline diet where you can still cook and stuff like that. Um, if you're going to consume meat and dairy products, please, please, please um, source your meat well. You know what I mean? I've been talking about this a lot lately because uh, I've just been getting a lot of comments about like meat and stuff and people, you know, people being upset at me because I only promote, <laughs> I only pr promote whole food plant based. But I, I promote whole food plant based because it's optimal. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy. People be like, "Oh, you can you can eat meat and get healthy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, so if you're gonna eat meat, then just make make sure you source it well and don't eat a ton of it, especially coming off of this protocol. Just take it easy. Give your body time to adjust. All right. So there's the warning. So you're gonna do two days of the juice feasting, right? You're gonna do a gallon or so. It doesn't have to be exactly a gallon, but you wanna do a lot of juice, at least half a gallon of subacidic fruit juice. This is gonna pull that the material out. And then and then um, you guys can do another flush, like uh, if you're gonna do the Epsom salt or if you're gonna do the castor oil or if you're gonna do you know de detox herbs, you can hit it. After you do your, your two days of juice, you hit yourself with another flush. So. All of that broken up material that might still be kind of stagnant and hanging out, now it'll come out, right? And then you start your fasting, right? So, um, and also, by the way, um, while you're doing the juice feasting, you don't have to do a gallon of water. So you don't have to do a two gallons of liquid, but you still want to have some water. You still want to have some water, especially if you're uh, drinking like something, uh, you know, like the orange juice or something like that. You still want to get your water in. Okay, so... Hopefully we're all we're still following. I'm building. Listen, we're, I'm building it as we fly, y'all. This is a brand new protocol. 
I, I, I wasn't even thinking about talking about this. It just, everything just kind of came together. So we're building it as we fly. So I hope y'all taking notes. The replay is not going to be available. No, I'm joking. Replay is always available. Um, so now that we've done that, now we're going to move into our, our 5-2 schedule. I want to do the 5-2 because I want to help you guys drop this, this 40 pounds quick. So we're going to do five days of fasting, two days of eating. Now, typically, I would not give you guys this option, but since we're just focused on knocking out 40 pounds, um, during this time, okay, for the first couple of days, I want you all to rough it out as much as you can. But if at any point you feel like, okay, Chris, I'm about to quit this thing, I, I, I'm not able to focus, um, you know, um, I've got some thing, some big event going up, I've got to speak, I've got to whatever, do something. If you need something extra, um, go ahead and get yourself either some fresh squeezed green juice or you could do coconut water. Both of these will be acceptable. If you're going to do coconut water, try to find like the young Thai coconuts. You could usually get them in Whole Foods. Whole Foods, Sprouts. Um, I think Kroger has them too. You could probably find them in like your regular grocery store as well. So just kind of look for them. But usually Whole Foods and stuff has them. OK, these are drinking coconuts. And so they're, they're very good. They taste great. <clears throat> and the coconut um, is one of the only whole food liquids. OK, it's a whole food liquid that assimilates into the body extremely well. You can you can you could use it as an IV it goes right into the blood. Right. Pure coconut water. Very, very good. So you guys can use this if you need it. Do your best to, to get through it without it. But if you need it, you can use it. All right. So um, you're going to do the five days of fasting. When you go to break your fast, okay, you're going to do two days of eating. When you go to break your fast, you want to make sure uh, the first thing that you have is a piece of fresh fruit, like some, you know, like an apple or, you know, um, you, you could even slice up some cucumbers or, or bell peppers or something like that. You know what I mean? If you wanted to do that, you could do that as well. But you don't want to cook it. The first thing you eat needs to be a piece of fresh fruit, juicy fruit, something with high water content. So you're going to break your fast. Um, you're going to eat twice. You're going to eat twice on your refeed day. You're going to break your fast with your fruit. You could do like a smoothie. You could do even a fruit salad or something like that. Um I suppose you could do a salad as well. You could do a salad as well. Uh, just break your break your fast with some fruit first, though. And then on your second meal, I'm going to encourage you all, if you want to optimize, do a raw meal. Okay, so you could do, you know what I mean? Like a raw, we do what? We got the raw tacos. We got the raw sushi. You could do a raw pasta where you get the, the, the uh, zucchini and you spiralize it. And then you make a little nut sauce. And you eat that, you could do that. Oh, marinated mushrooms. Ooh, marinated mushrooms are fire. Like, if y'all never like just sliced up some mushrooms, made a real fire marinade, and let them sit for 15 minutes, you you don't know what you're missing out on. You know, that stuff goes good on anything. Uh, so those are some cool raw options. There's also like some amazing raw YouTube channels, and it makes it real easy. So uh you could do that, or if you're not gonna do the cooked food. I mean, the, the raw food, you could do cooked food, but I'm going to encourage you all, eat eat something raw first. So when you do your second meal, eat something raw first, and then eat your cooked food, okay? But only two meals, only two meals on your eat days. And um, if you, if you keep the meat, keep the meat intake to a minimum. Stay away from the processed foods and the refined sugars as well. And I and definitely no cheese. There's no reason for it. You're doing you're doing this process to cleanse yourself. Just stay, don't do any cheese, no meat, uh, no dairy products, no processed foods, no refined sugars. And if you're gonna eat meat, source it well and then eat raw before you eat cooked. Hopefully, I've stressed that enough. And then make sure that you're staying away from sodas and stuff. I mean, don't do not do any of that stuff. Drink your water. Have some fruit juice or something like that. Okay? I'm telling y'all, this, this protocol is going to help you lose weight extremely fast. Extremely fast. 
And then what I would encourage you to do is while you're doing this protocol, tune in, tap into AHA, look at some of the old content, look at some of the interviews, look at some of the resources that we provide. We've got so many resources available. Tap in and begin the process of learning all of the other important information about it so you can start developing lifestyle. But if you want to drop 40 pounds, this is how you do it. So now after the two days uh, of, of um, eating, you, you're you going to go back into your, your, your water fasting. And you're just going to repeat that cycle. <clears throat> and then... Uh, you know, within about three and within about three weeks, you'll be done three to three to four weeks, um, depending if you if you are um, if you're not as locked in, you know, you kind of you're fighting the process. It might take you five weeks, but that's pretty much it. So we're going to do a quick recap. I'm going to go to questions. I did see the super chat, so I'm going to make sure to answer the super chat. Hopefully I can just get back to it. Um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to stop eating breakfast. That's always number one and number, well, number one as well as hydration. So we're going to increase hydration. We want to make sure that we are, um, doing like infused, infused water. I, I said, you know, key limes or something like that. You could also do chia seeds. Okay. A little sprinkle of chia seeds in your water works as well. Um, then we're, we're only doing the two meals. To, you, you don't, you don't want to eat no snacking. You don't want to be snacking in between your meals. Right. Um, Begins, you know, sourcing high quality products, meat, you know, if you're going to do meat and stuff like that, source high quality stuff. You want to start doing your laxative. You're going to you're going to either do, you know, find a detox tea. You're going to do castor oil, castor oil, you know, uh, a teaspoon, two teaspoons or maybe even a tablespoon. That should get you going. I wouldn't take more than a tablespoon. because You might not think it's coming, but it's coming. And if you take two tablespoons, it's coming and it's coming and it's coming. OK. So don't irritate your system. Th these are really, really harsh, uh, like uh, laxatives. So don't like irritate your system. Two tablespoons, two teaspoons, maybe one tablespoon. All right, then, um, where was that? So you okay? And then you're gonna do, you're gonna do your, uh, you're gonna do your juice. You're gonna do two days of of uh, juice feasting. Uh, make sure that you get yourself some sub acidic fruit juice after you do your sub acidic fruit juice you're going to roll into your water and if you need something you're going to do either coconut fresh coconut or you're going to do like green juice all right and then you're going to rinse and repeat that process okay let's see if we can grab some questions see if i got the if i can find that super chat all right Rodney, appreciate that, man. Uh, is the 5.2 more optimal version of the R72 with regard to getting weight off fast? Um, so so the these two these two protocols were created for two different purposes. If you boil it down. If you boil it down strictly to weight loss, the 52 is more efficient, all right? But they but we but but when we developed these two protocols, they were for two different reasons. Um the 52 was first. The 52, the reason why we used that early on was because that that was a protocol my brother was using and he was he was uh he was 100 pounds overweight at the time. He was morbidly well, he was morbidly obese. He had infertility. He had diabetes. Uh, um, I said infertility. I meant to say impotency um, or erectile erectile dysfunction, whatever. And, and a slew of other problems. Insomnia, sleep apnea. I mean, just a slew of other problems. So we wanted a protocol that was a little bit more aggressive. So that protocol allows you to um, get deeper healing because you're fasting for longer which does result to more weight loss, but it also gives you a break every week, right? You get a two-day break. And that two-day break can also be used to um, enhance your social life while you're fasting. So if you if you have a, a social event that you need that you want to do or whatever, and it would be weird for you not to be fasting, or if you feel weird to not to or I'm saying it would be weird for you to be fasting, or if you feel weird to be you know, like not eating, 
then you can use you could use those two days for eating, right? For your social event, and then you fast around that. So that was kind of the point of that. The R72 is designed to give you optimal benefit for the least amount of effort. The body does different things based on the amount of time you you're fasting. You know, so the, the, the amount of time you fast, the body's gonna attack different things. When you when you fast for at least three days, you get a tremendous amount of benefit. Okay. There's some, there's much more benefit that comes with longer fasting for sure, but you get a tremendous amount of benefit. A lot of the processes, human growth hormone, autophagy, ketosis, you're getting all that, dumping sugar, you're getting all of that. And you only got to fast for three days. So every three days you get to eat or every, you know, after, after 72 hours you get to eat. And so it makes, it makes it much more sustainable. Five, two, I would say that after doing the five, two for, you know, maybe four weeks, six weeks for sure, you kind of get burnt out, right? Like you're, you're going to get burnt out on it. The, the R72, you can rinse and repeat that many different times. And this is why we we developed the challenge around it, because we find that it's just more sustainable for people. You know, I over answered that question because um, I want you guys to kind of understand, like, the mindset, because from the outside looking in, you might be like, oh, well, they're just picking random times. They're not random times. And that's why earlier I said I prefer the R72 over the 48 hour rolling cycle. Like, that's not to say that I'll never promote the the 48 hour rolling cycle, but the R72 is better. So I chose that for a reason, right? It's not arbitrary. Yeah, so I'm just kind of going through the comments now. Uh, Okay. When is the next challenge? Um, here's the good news. I don't have an answer for you, but here's the good news. The good news is we have two challenges that we are, that we have in rotation and they're all fully developed. So we can, we can do another challenge fairly soon. I'm going to tell you the, the, what's going to like determine when we do the challenge is the feedback from you all as the community. We don't want to burn you guys out on challenges. So we don't want to necessarily be doing challenges right after each other. The two challenges are different challenges. So maybe there's a group of people that like to do the 21 day and there's a group of people that like to do the R72. But I could tell you that we'll probably be shooting to do the next challenge March. Somewhere around March or we might start promoting it in March. Okay, so that's kind of when you can expect it. Can I fast while taking Adderall? Listen, um, that that might mm, you might be pretty sensitive fasting and taking Adderall. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a general rule of thumb. I don't I don't personally. All right, I'm not a doctor. I don't prescribe. Blah blah blah. I don't personally personally recommend taking medication while fasting. Now, there's a caveat. If you guys are on some hormone uh therapy there's certain things that you can't just stop taking you'll shock your body you guys who are taking that stuff know this so you know understand that but something like adderall um i would i would think that you probably want to get off adderall so this is kind of an excuse to start that process i'm going to i'm going to give you a tip okay uh, I'm going to give you a tip. Let me see here. There's a, there's a product called zero in. It is, it is essentially the natural version of Adderall. Imagine Adderall without the negative side effects. And that's essentially what zero in is. That's not all zero in is. Don't get me wrong. It does a lot, but for you, for this particular comment in this situation, um, it would be a cr- incredible replacement for Adderall. Okay, so I'm gonna put this link in the chat, and if you want to check it out, you can. But 
I, I wouldn't recommend taking Adderall and fasting. Zero in this product that I'm recommending, you can take it while you're fasting. But Adderall is no, you don't want to. I don't I don't recommend that. You're probably going to overstimulate yourself. There might be somebody in the chat who's done it. Everybody's a little different, though. So it's hard to say because you might respond to it differently. All right. I got another super chat. I want to grab that real quick. Oh, a super chat sticker. I can't see the sticker. Maybe because I'm not on YouTube, I got to view it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Okay, so realistically, how many calories should you be consuming day five of prep for fasting the day you're doing OMAD? Let's talk about OMAD. Let's talk about OMAD a little bit. So OMAD is one meal a day. Now, listen, y'all. OMAD is a really powerful technique. You can do a lot with OMAD, and you can get away with a lot with OMAD, okay? So when you ask me realistically, you know, what should you be consuming, it's a spectrum. You can get away with a lot with OMAD. I recommend... <clears throat> I recommend that when you're when you're doing when you're practicing OMAD that you eat until you're satiated. OK. Now, that sounds like obvious. It sounds like, OK, well, duh, Chris, I can do that. Mm, a lot of us don't do that. A lot of us eat until all the food on our plate is gone or, you know, we eat and then we have dessert in spite of how stuffed we are. A lot of us do not practice eating until you're satiated unfortunately we we practice gluttony so when you're doing omat the most important piece is eat until you're satisfied now how do you do this there is a signal that is sent from your gut to your brain to let your brain know bing i'm full okay but it takes time and in our in our bodies we are uh low functioning because of the chemical toxicity so we're low functioning so i imagine the signal moves even slower and there's certain foods you could eat that that block the signal okay so in order to kind of mitigate this what you could do is you get yourself a little plate if y'all have ever been like camping you get these little blue plates they're not like the full size plate but it's a little bit bigger than a saucer um Two things. Number one, it's a smaller portion size. You can't get as much food on it. That's good. So you get your plate, you eat, and then you give yourself 20 minutes. And then you go back for seconds. What that's going to do is give you enough time to register, okay, I'm full or I'm still hungry. The other thing that's cool about these plates, especially the camping plates, is they're blue. And for anybody who understands frequency, the color, the spectrum um, that re that is blue that frequency, it um, promotes uh, satiation. So there are there are different colors that are used to invoke different things in you. Okay, it's all there. It's all about frequencies. So when you look at some of the most popular fast food brands, you will see that their colors are red and yellow. Okay, the reason they use red and yellow is it because it makes you hungry. It makes you it increases appetite. Blue, especially the blue, the color they use on the the, the um, those plates for camping, promotes uh, satiation. So that's a small, that's a really cool small nuance that you can understand. So um, I don't count calories. I don't count calories. I don't. I don't teach uh, calorie counting. I teach eat the right foods and eat until you're satiated. If you do those two things, you don't have to count calories. OK, um, I'm not going to get into the whole count, counting calorie thing. I've done many videos on that before. You could probably look up a healthy alternative and then calories and you'll probably find videos where I've talked about it. But um, it's a it's an outdated science. And I always get one or two people in the comment section whenever I talk about this, talking about how I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm talking <laughs> How I'm stupid. I don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all crack me up with that. Uh, I think it's hilarious. Usually, usually people that aren't very well studied say that type of stuff. <sighs> okay. 
I wasn't going to I wasn't going to address this, but I'm going to address this. All right. It's my first time here. Is it too late to join the challenge? OK, so technically it's not too late to join the challenge. All right. The challenge is actually still open. However, I haven't been actively promoting it anymore because, you know, we get an influx of people that come in late and then they like they're they're there's like high levels of anxiety and they feel like they're behind everybody and all of this. So I wanted to give people an opportunity to still get in for a little while if they want to, if they feel like they want to, but not necessarily like promote it because we've already started. So you could technically still get in. Um, it will be closing soon. Per, you know, it'll be it, it it's going to close once we start fasting. It's closed, but it's still open. If you decide to join, um, you need to you need to take time. You know what I mean? Take take an hour or two. Okay, when you join that that day and catch up, you know, we've got we've got uh, we've got some PDF guides um, and we've got a couple introductory videos that you need to watch and that'll help get you caught up. You can't catch up on all the content in, a, in an hour or two, but you can get caught up on the information you need to begin the process of getting caught up. OK, so if you guys want to, it's still open, but. um you have some catching up to do. And and honestly, you know, if you if you just follow everything that we've done up until that point, you might not necessarily catch back up to the group, but you'll still get all the benefits and you'll get to interact in the group and be a part of it. And we dropped that bomb cookbook. So there's that, too. OK, here's a question. Is it better to diversify your fasting? Is it better to diversify your fasting? That's a good question. Is it better? Is it better to diversify? Hmm. Um, I don't know if better is the right word. Better is going to better is going to is going to be a very individual thing, right? Is it better for me? Is it better for them? What's better for one person might be to just stick with one very simplistic fasting regimen that they can get familiar with and they can rock out with. What's better for you might be diversity. So how can we kind of determine which one would make more sense? Um, first of all, you you have to be an you have to play an active role in this process. I always tell people, you know, you have to learn to be the captain of your wellness ship. This is not for me to determine what you should do. Our goal, the AHA, the goal of AHA is to give you guys the tools. We want to teach you how to fish. We don't want to give you fishes. Sometimes I'll give you all a fish. Every blue moon, I'll give you all a fish. But for the most part, I want to teach you how to fish. So pay attention to how you are interacting with your fasting method, whatever method you choose. Okay. <clears throat> if you find that the method that you that you're using resonates with you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't go out your way to find something different. If you if you, if the if the process is resonating, you're you know, you're getting the outcomes you want, even if you're not getting them as quickly as you want. If you're getting the outcomes you want, you're seeing for for progress. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um if you were getting progress and now you're not, or if you feel burnt out, or if you have life circumstances that that aren't they're no longer um whatever method you were, were using before is is not really viable then changing it up might help you know what i'm saying like it probably will help if you feel if you if you're experiencing um an, an, an extraordinary amount of stress sometimes it's good to change your your approach on fasting you know what i mean versus to like keep doing what you're doing for other people. You know, sometimes when you're experiencing a lot of stress, you need to start fasting. My brother, Steve, years ago, it's probably about what? Six, six years ago, he was dealing, he was dealing with a extraordinary amount of stress. He had never fasted at that time. And I kept telling him like, you need to fast, man. It's going to help you. It's going to help you think more clearly. It's going to help you make better decisions. And when he finally started doing it, he was like, Chris, I'm I'm so sorry. I've been waiting so long to do this. 
Like, this has been so good for me. So, one other piece I'll add to this is um, this isn't really this isn't technically diversifying that you're fasting, but it is. There's a there's a method that Justin Howell he termed he termed it hybrid fasting. I try to give Justin his credit anytime I talk about it. Um, eventually, I'll stop giving him credit, but I told him I'm gonna steal the term because I mean. I mean, he might have said it. I don't know if he'd really be saying it, though. But hybrid fasting is where you essentially blend, you know, two or more uh, fasting techniques over a period of time. So, for example, yo, hit the like button for me, y'all. I'm Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the, hit the, hit the like button. I got like seven likes. What's up with that? Actually, those are from, those are from uh, Facebook. I don't know what I'm getting on YouTube. It doesn't show me. Hit the like button. Anyway. It's where you take two or more fasting protocols and you and you blend them. And and this is this can be an advanced technique. Um, it's important if you're going to use this technique, it's important to understand the different techniques that you're that you're working with. So, oh, this reminds me. And and I'm I'm saying I'm gonna say this because somebody said, is it all about money for you? Since they said that, I'm gonna tell y'all I have an academy. Um, and, and one of the one of the programs on the academy is called the uh, the, the uh, fasting the HA fasting system. This is perfect for if you want to learn and develop hybrid fasting techniques. I go through one of the courses on there. I go through multiple different fasting techniques, um, kind of like in depth, so that you can understand the mechanics of it, understand the pros and the cons of it, and then once you have that baseline information, you can then begin making fat fasting uh hybrid techniques so if you guys are interested if you want to like mess with some hybrid techniques you want to learn um i do have the information spread out on my youtube videos but if you want it in like a concise format go to aha wellness academy.com aha wellness academy.com and and then you know sign up for the fasting system and it's all in there Shout out, shout out to the, to the, I think the lady that asked me if it was all about money. It's not, but I do have, I do have some opportunities for you all to invest in yourself if you want. You like how I put that? I got some opportunities for y'all to invest in yourself if you're interested. I'm just looking through these, these questions. Okay. So why does my weight slow to less than a pound a day around day? Well, then less than a pound around day seven. I started at 205. Now I'm 189. You know, these questions are challenging to answer on a, on a, like more of a general platform because usually I like to have a back and forth with people to understand what they're experiencing and why. Um, I'll throw a couple ideas out there. Usually the one of the first thing I do is I ask, have you prepped? If you if you started fasting and you didn't prep, that might be why your weight loss is slowing. We talked about prep. Yeah, we well, we talked about the the prep to lose 40 pounds quickly at the beginning of this this um, live. So if you didn't see that, rewatch the live so you can get that. Um, but prepping is very important and that's going to help. Okay. Sometimes when your weight slows, uh, depending on how long, how long you've been fasting, it could be a couple different things. It could either be your, it could be your shrink week. Okay. So the shrink week is a, a week long period of time where your weight loss, uh, slows or halts. And the reason the body does that is because it's contouring. Right. It's it's all the toning and tightening and it's taking them inches off. And so you don't lose weight during that time or you lose less weight. Your question isn't really uh, indicating that it sounds like you're still losing weight. So that's probably not it, but it could be. The other the other thing is, if um, if you're a woman, I believe you are, um, if you're on your cycle or if it's around that time, 
You could be retaining water. Okay, that's another thing. Um, and then also, and and this one's probably going to be mm, for most people. This might apply men and women, kind of across the board. This is more of a general. Um, your elimination pathways may be closed. They're not. They're not really opened. If your elimination pathways are not opened, or if they're partially opened, or if they're partially blocked, or whatever, then your weight loss will slow. Over time, you fast, you, you do things right, they'll open up more and you'll see more consistent results. But that could be it as well. You know, and there's there's many different ways to go about opening up the elimination pathways. Um, I don't even know if I want to tell you all this at this point in time, because it sounds like I just keep talking about products and, and services. <laughs> but there is a there is a product. It's called Restore. Uh, restore it's it's um you guys can find it on that that link that i put in the chat from root okay you guys got to use the link if you want to if you want to check out these products but these are these this is just a company that we're affiliated with and they have a couple different products so that's the reason why i'm talking about them but the restore um i just put the link in the chat what restore does is it opens up the elimination pathways so that when you when you start fasting your body eliminates well if, it, if your body's not eliminating well and you're fasting, it will slow down your progress across the board. Um, Restore also helps with the, the uh, regulating the gut, the microbiome in the gut. It um, has a pre, I believe, mm, I might be wrong. I think it has a prebiotic. It's either that or one of the other products now. I don't even, I don't remember. But um, it helps to restore gut health. Gut health is extremely important for elimination. OK, it's going to help you with fasting when you eliminate, because a lot of people don't know when you fast, your microbiome like bacteria starts to die off. Y'all know that, right? Like one of the reasons why you get a lot of bad breath is because bacteria is dying. Um, acid reflux can be because bacteria is dying, dying off. Um, so you you a, a lot of detox symptoms you can experience from the gut and the bacteria dying off. And you got to understand. Yes, these are microorganisms, but they are organisms nonetheless. That means they have waste. That means they have uh, they have waste material, and when they die, their their body becomes a carcass. So so this waste material has to be transported out of the body. So Restore helps tremendously with that process. <clears throat> there's a there's a uh, video coming out pretty soon. Um, I'll probably launch it. I'm probably going to launch it this this Sunday or or next week, okay? And it is uh, my brother Stephen, who you all should be familiar with, but he has had an incredible journey thus far, an incredible journey, okay? It's been six years or seven years, and we we did his update video finally. Y'all been waiting for that video for probably a year, okay? We did his update video. One of the one of the big impacts that he saw was his weight had actually uh, slowed to a to a crawl. I mean, it was it was it it eventually it was stopping for large periods of time. Y'all are going to learn a lot from this this live stream. So make sure to, or not this live stream. Well, yes, this live stream. But this video that I'm going to put out, make sure to watch that video. But what he but he you know, he went periods of time without losing weight. And he said as soon as he started taking restore. He was taking one or two uh, sachets a day. He said his weight picked up like that. I'm not telling y'all this just because I want to sell it to you, okay? I promise you. That's not my intention. I'm telling you because it works. So uh, that's an option for you. I'm going I'm to take a couple more questions, and it looks like I got a couple super chats. And then, you know what I'm saying, you know, I'm coming up on an hour, you know what I mean? I didn't expect to go this long. Please share tips for diabetics wanting to fast. Great question. If you're a diabetic, number one, you need to understand that fruit is not your enemy, okay? Because a lot of doctors and, and, and different practitioners will tell you fruit is bad. Fruit is not. Why do they say fruit is bad? Well, because sugar, sugar content. You need to understand the difference between di um, glycemic index and glycemic load, okay? It's important to understand how the body assimilates the sugar. That's what's important, especially for diabetics, but just in general. 
the way the body processes and assimilates refined sugar, we're talking uh, high fructose, corn syrup, we're talking uh, you know, white granulated sugar, we're talking, you know, brown sugar, all that crap. The way the body processes that is night and day different from how it processes the sugar from fruit. So if you want to use dates or apples or strawberries or whatever. So fruit is not your enemy. One of my brothers, I um, was telling you all about him earlier, John. When he very first started his fasting, he was a diabetic, right? So we had we put him on a 5-2. I talked about that earlier. He did uh, six weeks. He was on the 5-2 for about six weeks. I think we started him off on, I think he did like eight days of fasting, like pure water fasting to start. And then he switched to the 5-2. During the time when he was doing the 5-2, he was drinking maybe half a, gal eh, half a gallon of juice um, every day three days. Okay. So he was supplementing with juice. He was using orange juice. Now, based on what they tell you, that should be bad for him. That should exacerbate the problem, but it didn't. He was able to reverse his diabetes in six weeks. It's six weeks. All of the symptoms associated with his diabetes was gone and he lost 50 pounds. We documented it. It's on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think the video is called how to lose 50 pounds in six weeks without loose skin. I think that's the video. If you type that in, if you type in a healthy alternative, how to lose 50 pounds in six weeks or something like that, you, it should pop up. And it's a series of videos. There's one long interview, but then there's also like a whole bunch of short interviews, like short segments if you guys want to just seg you know, listen to certain segments. So that's one tip. The other tip is there are certain foods that are, you know what I'm saying, kind of aid. So low glycemic fruits are great for you as well. Tart cherry juice is amazing for diabetics. Um, trying to think. I think, okay. Yes, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going through my memory banks. Cinnamon bark. Cinnamon bark essential oil is good for diabetics. You do one drop, uh, uh, one or two drops of cinnamon bark in your water, you can even you can even do a little hot water. You can warm the water up, put a little cinnamon bark essential oil in there, and you just drink it two two or three times, you know, two times a day. Um, that'll help to regulate your your blood sugar. What else? This will be the last tip I give you. Um, when it comes to diabetes, you need to understand that it is, it is an environmental disorder. It's an environmental disease. It's not genetic. It is, it is reversible, but you're going to want to change your lifestyle. So when I say environmental, the reason why we see, you know, your dad might have diabetes and then the son has diabetes is because they're eating the same things. They grew up in the same, same household. The dad passed the habits onto the son, right? And then the son passes his habits onto his son. And that's how, how it keeps going through our generation. It's not because it's ge genetic. So you want to just, you want to eliminate certain foods, okay? For diabetes, we already know sugar is bad. Refined sugar is, is very, very bad. Um, I would encourage you to, to lean towards natural sugars and sweeteners if you like cookies and stuff. Because, you know, that tends to be a trend. Make your stuff from scratch and use natural sweeteners. It really makes a huge difference. Number one, if you promise yourself, I'm only going to have it if I make it from scratch, you're going to reduce how much you eat it. Number two, you're going to trick yourself into thinking, oh, well, I can have it anytime I want. That's a really good way to trick yourself. Because when people say, oh, I can never have this or that again, it just makes them want it. Think about the rebellious teenage girl. She's the perfect example. No, you can't go outside. She's sneaking outside. You know what I mean? So don't tell yourself, no, you can never have it again. Just come up with better alternatives, right? That's why I named this brand a healthy alternative because it's it's all about coming up with alternatives that resonate with you. So, you know, make your cookies from scratch. Oh, fun fact. We, we, created, we created a cookbook, right? And we gave it to the R72 Challengers for free. Um, it'll be on sale for you all that aren't in the challenge in a month or two. But we we have a really cool cookie recipe in there, and that would be that would be a great option, 
You know what I mean? Make it from scratch and then, you know, get your fix. Um, but yeah, change your dietary strategy. That's going to help a lot. Instead of being afraid of fruit, be afraid of Snickers bars and, you know, soda and all the stuff that has way worse sugar in it. So hopefully that helps you. We have helped people. We've helped a lot of people reverse diabetes. Okay. The Lady J247. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, you got another one. Wait, there's nothing there. Oh, thank you again. I hope you didn't have a question. Let me see if you actually had a question and you maybe made a mistake here. It doesn't look like it. Oh, wait. Yes, here we go. Look how efficient I am. Y'all see how efficient I am? Drive fast. Day six. Can't stop spitting which is annoying as heck. Oh, that's not a question. It's a statement. Oh, well, I got it. Um, fun fact. Fun fact. When you dry fast, you typically have more moisture in your water, in your uh, mouth. A lot of people think that when you dry fast, you your, your mouth's going to be dry. It's actually the opposite. So you go, you, you know, dry fasting is excellent for inflammation. Um, it's excellent for a lot of things. It's a really, really po powerful technique. That's basically where you just don't eat or drink. Um, learn more about it before you do it. If you guys join the academy, I talk about it in there. But most people think that your mouth's going to be dry. And actually, your mouth, your body sends a lot of moisture to the mouth. So it is less dry than it is when you're drinking water. It's pretty interesting. But that's what's probably causing your spitting. Um, the microbiome, the, the bacteria in your mouth is probably uh, doing some work, balancing enzymes. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Thank you for sitting with me for this time. I hope you got some good out of it. Make sure to subscribe if you guys want to check out any of the things that I mentioned on the live. I'll put the links in the description as well so you can check it out. Um, Sunday video coming soon. We'll probably be launching Steve's video, so check that out. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. And I might go live again. I don't know. We'll see. Peace.